If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more funding for your deals, as in unlimited funding, you're at the right place. Don't go anywhere. We're going to plug you into the money for your deals. But first, if you're a first time viewer uh, or visitor, I want to give you a special welcome to the show here, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host. I'm known as the Private Money Authority, coming to you and broadcasting from Moorhead City, North Carolina. And uh, wow, welcome to the movement. We're getting tens of thousands of downloads a week and a month now here on the show. And we're up into the hundreds and something of episodes. Been having just phenomenal guests here on the show. And I've got another very, very special guest and good friend with me to join on the show today that's going to be talking about that exact topic. And that is getting funding for your deals. But not only does she talk about funding, but she also just talks about and has excellent advice for any real estate investor, whether you're brand new or you're seasoned. But before I bring my guest on the show, I want to give everybody a free gift. And that is I've got a free on-demand masterclass that's just waiting for you to attend. It's also called Where to Get the Money Now. It talks about how to get private money for your lending and for your business. So just go right here to this website when we finish the show, and that's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast, all one word, money podcast. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce to you my good friend, my colleague, an expert in lending. Her name is Wendy Sweet, and Wendy has been lending money to real estate investors all the way back since 2001, both as a conventional lender and also as a hard money lender. Now, in 2008, she, along with some of her best friends, just tossed to the roadside conventional <laughs> lending and started focusing in on what she does now. Now, she and her partner, who is also her brother, mm -hmm. his name is Bill Fairman, <laughs> and they lend primarily now in North and South Carolina to investors, rehabbers, and builders. But by the way, if you're not in North Carolina or South Carolina, don't go away from the show right now because I promise you, Wendy's going to be bringing value to you here on the show, no matter where you're from. Now, they currently also lend to commercial investors for multifamily, rehabbers, builders, et cetera, multi-tenanted projects. And they also manage a real estate fund for accredited investors. So you may be wanting to borrow money. You may be <laughs> wanting to get high rates of return safely and securely. And if you've got some of that, Wendy can help you with that as well for brokering loans for those that have got money to invest. Now, beyond that, Wendy is also for over 35 years, she's been a licensed real estate broker in the Carolinas and her goal and man, if she doesn't deliver is to guide and assist like-minded people like us to build their wealth through a proven lent through proven lending while providing strong returns safely and securely for real estate investors. My good friend and colleague, Wendy Sweet, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jay. You make me sound like a true champion. Thank you. Well, you are, <laughs> Wendy, you are. And yeah. I'll tell you, Wendy, before we get into, I was getting ready to say into the meat and potatoes of the show, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, okay? One is on a very deep level, i.e. on a spiritual level. But before we get to that, how about take a moment and tell my audience why it is or how it is that you are qualified to talk about real estate investing and real estate lending? Well, I read in a book actually just this past week and that said, your qualifications are the results. And that's the only thing I can go by. You know, I, I always say that I'm highly qualified because I've stepped in every pile of poop out there. Um, <laughs> So I'm fully qualified. You, you missed a couple because I found them. Well, uh, and, and I'm sure there's more there. And, and I'm looking forward to stepping in those as well. We just hope that you lose as little money as possible when that happens. And I tell people constantly, if you haven't lost money in real estate yet, you haven't done enough or you're not trying to do enough because it's going to happen no matter how much homework you do, no matter no matter how great the numbers are. You know, bad things happen all the time that you have no control of. 
right? Well, that's, as long as we're making bigger wins than we are losses, we come out ahead <laughs> okay, right? That's the, that's the <laughs> name of the game. You know, yeah. if you're a note buyer, you're told to buy, don't buy one, you buy 10. Because you can count on at least three of them going by the wayside. So the uh, same holds true in real estate. Not that you're going to lose every, you know, th three deals out of every 10. That's not really how it works. But, you know, there's, there's always things that are absolutely beyond your control, whether it's the weather, the government, or other people. There's just all kinds of things that can take place that, that and, and the, the goal is just to maneuver your way around it and to learn from, from everything that happens. Yeah, so true, so true. So tell us about your background, Wendy. Uh, how did you get involved in real estate investing and lending? Well, I, I'm a, I call myself a recovering mortgage broker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> me, too. me too. I still got my license, but I don't originate. That, that's exactly right. I, I'm just, I was very blessed to work with Larry Goins. I'm sure you know who he is. Oh, sure. He's a great guy, marketing genius. So we were, had a partnership and it was called Financial Help Services. We only did investor loans. That's what we specialized in. So, so as I'm doing these investor loans, I'd have people who were very qualified for a loan, but they couldn't find property and they had money in the bank, 401k, self-directed IRA kind of stuff. And then I had other people that would apply for loans. They wouldn't qualify, but they were really good at finding houses. So I started putting those two people together. And, and that's really how I started lending hard money. I ended up with $23 million of other people's money that I loaned out. And after about 10 years of putting the puzzles together, that's when I said, hey, you know what? Maybe we should start a fund. <laughs> right. And, and yeah, I got smart about that. Uh, that's made it a lot, a lot easier. But we still do what we call one-off lenders, you know, lending money from one person to another there that aren't accredited and can't can't get into the fund. But it's a it's fun. I know, you know, I never thought that I would love finance like I do because I really stunk in math. <laughs> okay. But but it's it's the art of the deal. The financing is really how, how you can make deals work. Any deal that comes across your desk, if you have the right financing in place, you can make it work. Whether it's borrowing money, seller financing, uh, there's just all kinds of things that you can do to make the deal work. And it all depends upon the financing that you put in place. Absolutely. You know, what I discovered years and years ago is when you know you've got the financing in place, it just seems as though the deals come along a little easier. That's so know? true. That I is mean, so true. The, the deals have already been there, but you know, how much greater is your confidence and how much more energy are, is a real estate investor actually going to be out there pursuing deals when they know that, you know, the funding is in place. And Wendy, I know you have been just abundantly blessed and the world of, I mean, you're, you've been a real estate investor yourself, correct? Mm -hmm. I am. Yes. Yes. And so you invest, you've been a big part for many, many people on providing funding. And so I want to share with everyone, and you don't even know this, Wendy, uh -oh. I, want, I, want, <laughs> I, want to, I want to share with everyone before we start so everybody stick around. Wendy's going to be telling you here in a few minutes, uh, you know, about how you can connect with her and the kind of lending that you can get for your deals. But I just want to go ahead and jump into this to this part of the to this part of the story and, and how you and I have connected. So I just want everybody to know about a telephone call that I made to you a few weeks ago. It was probably, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago, maybe eight weeks ago, something like that. And I want you and everybody to know the impact that this telephone call has already had on me personally. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, you know, you and I, just to let everybody know, you and I are in a mastermind together that is for, you know, real estate investors and, and, and people that are involved in this world of real estate investing where we help each other out. And, you know, it's, it's it got some pretty high criteria on being accepted and being accepted into the group, doing a certain number of deals per year and et cetera. And so when do you know you and I, because the group is the size that it is, we really hadn't connected in person at the group. So I reached out to you a few weeks ago to set an appointment 
to talk with you about your lending criteria and thus and so, because I'm always looking for more relationships of people that have lending because my students, of course, are always looking for more lending and, and, and funding as well as myself. So I recall Wendy calling you up and the purpose of that first phone call was just to set an appointment for us to talk. Hmm. And on the phone, uh, we're chatting for a moment. And I said to you, I said, well, Wendy, I said, how's this coming Wednesday? How is your Wednesday looking? And you said, <laughs> well, actually, Jay, I tithe my Wednesdays. So I won't be available to talk with you on Wednesdays or that Wednesday. And so I said, OK, well, that's interesting. And so we went on, you know, and set our appointment. And so I hung up the phone and this voice, this conversation of you saying to me in my ear, well, I tithe my Wednesdays and I'm not available. And it just wouldn't leave me alone as to Wendy Sweet talking about tithing or Wednesdays and, and whatever that's all about. So I want to put my story on a parenthetical pause <laughs> right now, I want you to I want you to just tell everybody right now, tell my audience right now, what does that mean in your world that you tithe your Wednesdays? And after you tell everybody what you do, then I want to pick up the story and, and finish the story. Or actually, there's no finishing of the story. Let everybody know what has happened since that conversation. So what's that mean and how do you tithe your Wednesdays? Well, I have a dear friend. His name is Jeff Johnson. He's a rehabber, very successful rehabber in our area. And he and I were having a conversation. He was telling me that he meets with people on Tuesdays be because... There's so many people, and I'm sure you get this too, that, hey, can I grab a cup of coffee with you? Can I take you out to lunch and pick your brain? And you want to help everybody. But, you know, who, who has time? You know, when can you really do that? And then when you do help them, their phones ring in and all kinds of things are going on. So I was in a quiet moment with my Savior. And I know that I can... I can write a check and donate that to church or charity or whatever. Writing a check is easy. You know, that it doesn't hurt. You know, well, it can hurt, but it, it doesn't hurt. But giving my time away is, it's hard to do. It's really, really hard to do. So I knew that that was a challenge that was being presented to me. So I just prayed about it and realized that that's what I need to do is just give away every Wednesday, no matter what happens. So I have... Every Wednesday that I'm in town, I have it set up from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. People can make appointments every hour. Most of them come to me, a coffee shop right across the road from my office, or we can do it virtually. I, I do that. But it's a free hour of mentorship. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, too, you know, what, what can I give these people? You know, they're, they, you know does everybody want to learn about a loan? And it's so funny is that most people don't. What they're asking about is I've got commercial developers and and real estate brokers and uh, people that have been investors for years that just want a different direction or somebody from outside to take a look at what's going on in their world. And it's kind of like a little mini brain trust. And what I've gotten out of it is you can't put a price on it. It's amazing. Now, I'm not getting loans out of it, but what's coming in the back door is just, you know, I just... I, I just couldn't couldn't ask for anything better of what I'm getting back out of it. it it's just it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I'm booked through the end of June. <laughs> <laughs> just, I think it's funny. <laughs> oh wow, that's that's fantastic. So you know, so you tell me you're and you're actually you're doing that giving it away really in honor of God. Oh, um, it, absolutely, absolutely. You know, probably part of that is in gratitude for how much you've already been blessed, and you're wanting to share with other well, people. Well, I, I, I didn't learn by accident. I learned because of others giving to me and stepping in the piles of poop. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yes, and the way it goes, unfortunately, is it's those lessons and seminars that we attend that we did not intend to attend. <laughs> that we uh, learn the most lessons. You know, I tell people, I say, look, you're going to spend the money. You're going to get your education. You either do it intentionally or you do it not intentionally or you do That's it. That's right. Not. So anyway, so let me pick up the story since our conversation. Oh, I'm excited so, to hear. <laughs> so, uh, so as you know, I called you back. Mm -hmm. 
and I asked you, I said, all right, Wendy, tell me, what are you doing with your time on your Wednesdays? And you just shared that with everybody. And so, in fact, you told me on the telephone, you said, well, you know, Jay, if you can't get that phrase out of your brain, God must be trying to tell you something. That's too. right. right? <laughs> so, so anyway, you know, it's, re- it's really, really interesting. Because my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we, in fact, we met at church 34 years ago. That's out awesome. In, out of Texas. My first Sunday in town was in Wichita Falls, Texas. And so uh, friends of our family referred me to this particular church in Wichita Falls, Texas, and I'm there. And so I meet Carol Gann on Sunday night, that very first Sunday in town. And so we've been dating ever since. So, so anyway. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, so anyway, we're, we know that's our foundation. God's our foundation. That's how we met. That's what our marriage is built on. As a result, we're very, very involved in our local church here in Moorhead City, North Carolina. And, you know, we give a lot in time. I mean, we're, we're there Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights when we're in town. And then every Monday evening, I am teaching a, 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 a song, a sight reading of songs, a cappella singing and new songs and et cetera. Oh, neat. However, however, your giving and your tithing, if you will, still just kept resonating. And I was going, you know, wouldn't that just be really cool for me to take a day of the week where I'm normally home or part of a day or whatever and serve in some kind of way? Well, I knew after visiting with you, I probably wouldn't be able to give away the mentorships because quite frankly, I've had hundreds of people pay me a lot of money to (laughs) to mentor them. And I'm not so sure how well that would go if I started giving that away on the street. But but, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ways on how to serve. Absolutely. And so I started, so since my conversation with you, I started calling other friends that I know that really have dedicated their lives to service. And in fact, that's what they get up for in the middle uh, every morning. And so I called up this couple recently and they're very involved with the, with, uh, with the Rotary Club and the uh, Salvation Army and, and other areas. And so anyway, I, I called them up. I said, I want you to help me brainstorm on something. So I shared the story with them and I said, you know what? I said, I can't be looking and I can't be searching and soul searching for significance or looking to make an impact or a difference because I'm already doing that. I mean, God has blessed me to make a huge difference in a lot of people's lives, but what is it that I'm searching for? And they got to sharing with me that their biggest bang that they get for their time invested is serving people that they know directly cannot do one thing for them. Wow. Wow. And so in talking with that conversation, they have introduced me to a mission here in Moorhead City that's called Hope Mission. And this is where prisoners and drug addicts and alcoholics and et cetera, who are, who are the downtrodden, the wow. French, are looking for hope, are looking for a better life, are looking for encouragement. And so, Wendy, I found myself down at Hope Mission three days last week, just, wow. uh, just investigating what is going on. And in that short period of time, it's been amazing. The experience that I've had on visiting with these people on, on a very, very deep level. And so anyway, why in the world are we taking time to share this conversation with thousands and thousands and thousands of people that download and listen to my show? And I'll tell you why. The reason I wanted to share this part of the story, and we'll get into the funding and lending now in just a second. But hey, I can stay on this all the time. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> all right. But the, the reason I wanted to take a few minutes and share with my audience, straight from the heart, straight from the soul, this story and this conversation that you and I started out having a few weeks ago is because... I have, I have known and learned for many years that if you really want to be, quote unquote, whatever your definition of success mm. in life is, if mm. you really want to be successful, 
I didn't start really waking up until a few years ago and really realizing this world is not about me. Yep. This world, this world ain't about me. And when everybody else, and not when everybody else, but when other people are also experiencing this world is not about me and it's all about serving and what can I do for other people, whether you're, whether you are exchanging money or not, then that's where the fulfillment is going to come from. And so the reason I'm sharing this story with everybody is because I want my audience to ask the question, why are you doing or why are you interested in doing what you're doing? That's right. Because until we actually answer that question, we're going to be running around with our hair on fire mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. still not experiencing fulfillment. That's right. Does that make sense, Wendy? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's wonderful that you're doing this on your podcast because there's so many people who absolutely are not bold enough to be able to to speak their their true feelings and what works for them and bring their Lord and Savior up in in front of people. It, it's uh, it's really awesome that you're doing that. You know, I also lead a subgroup every Friday morning. We meet for breakfast at 7 a.m. I've been doing that since 2002. We have anywhere from 55 to 60 people that will show up there every week. There's probably 600 people on my mailing list when I send out an email to remind them. We do a five-minute devotional and bring in different speakers. Anybody in that room could teach because they're all just so full of knowledge. They're hardcore investors. They've been around. There's a few newbies but most people have a great deal of experience with them. And what's really cool is anyone in that room could get up and do the devotional as well. And we do have people all sharing, sharing in that as well. But what's come from this is just a better way of doing real estate. You've got people that you know, like, and trust that you're able to do business with. And And the people that are truly benefiting are people who are moving into homes that would never have an opportunity to do so. They're moving into a home that cut corners were not cut. They were done right. There's just people have jobs now. There are are construction crews out there that that are able to to hire on more people. And they're, they're just doing a better job working for better employers just because everyone is kind of like-minded on what they're doing and they're all doing business together. It is so, it is so exciting to see that. The other thing that's really cool is they operate from a sense of abundance rather than scarcity. And when you do that, people are, people just hand you deals in your lap that, you know, well, I don't do this kind of business. I think this would work better for you. Everyone knows what everyone else does. And it's just, it's all about how can I help you? You know, like, like Zig Ziglar says, what is it? You're helping the way to get what you need is to help others get what they want, right? Yeah, exactly. My paraphrase is, as long as I'm helping enough other people get what they want, I don't have to worry about me. That's right. That's exactly right. That, that's exactly right. It's, it's just... Even from that that uh, group that meets every Friday morning, we've spawned a local mastermind called King City Mastermind, and it's made up of 12 people, and we're all just absolutely dedicated to letting God be our CEO rather than making those decisions ourselves, and it's just a- amazing how close you can come to someone that that you just know they have no judgments. You can tell them your deepest darkest, hey, here's what's going on. And someone's been through that and they can help you through it. It's just, it's just amazing. We're, in fact, we're going on a mission trip, trip in Africa this summer. Wow. To finish up an orphanage. So we're really excited about that, taking 33 people with us. Wow. Wow. Yeah, well, and you see, you know, when you're involved with a group of people, then doing that kind of uh, work and service, then, I mean, that's just an example of, why we're doing what we're doing, you know? That's exactly right. And so, you know, when you bring up the word service and what can we do for others, one thing that I've experienced and one thing that I share with my students at my live events is how 
how every transaction can truly be a win for everybody involved. And I learned this from my dad, Wallace Connor. I learned from him that unless everyone is winning in the transaction, then it's really not a transaction that we want to be involved in. For example, right. you just mentioned that in your group there, that because of the kind of business and ethical business that your, your network does, there's, they are having people move into their homes that ordinarily perhaps. That's right. In the home. So, Wendy, here's one thing. Here's one thing that I do in my business, and and my students learn it as well. And that is, let's say that I am, let's say that I have invested in a single family house, and the owner of the house was a uh, was it was not in the multiple listing service, but they were in distress. Mm-hmm. Maybe the, maybe the property was in distress. Maybe they, their personal lives were in some type of distress, which typically they are, as you know. Right. And, and let's say that I used, let's say I used private money, mm. okay, to fund the deal. And then let's say I sold that home after I had rehabbed it to someone on rent to own. Right. That couldn't go get a mortgage. Well, right there, that's more than three or four people that just want want one mm-hmm. in that transaction. So first of all, when we, when I bought that single family house from the person in distress, I was able to give them relief. Mm-hmm. Not only perhaps debt relief if they had a mortgage, but I was also able to give them emotional relief and give it to them very, very quickly because they had this burden of this debt, this house, this responsibility, this upkeep on them. And they didn't have time for whatever reason to list the house traditionally through a realtor. So they won. Well, let's say I use private lender funds to fund the deal. They for sure won. If they were oh, getting, yeah. if they were getting <laughs> eight or 10% or whatever it was that they right. were in the deal, getting high rates of return safely and securely. If I sold it on rent to own, well, let me ask you, Wendy, you're the expert. Today, what would you say, uh, so to speak, is how, what's the percentage of people right now in America that cannot even go to the bank and get a mortgage to buy a house? Gosh, I couldn't even put a percentage on that, but it's, it's pretty high. Yeah, last I heard, it was between 70 and 80%, so it's and- like r- really high. And it all a lot of times too. It doesn't even have to do with whether or not they qualify. You know, you've got a bunch of self-employed people. Look at all the people who are self-employed now because of what happened in two thousand seven and two thousand eight. They lost their jobs. They started businesses. There's a lot of people who are self-employed that don't qualify. That's true. That's true. And so, so all these people that can take advantage of our rent to own programs. So there's a win. And then of course, I sort of view us when we're, you mentioned the art of the deal, structuring a deal or pulling these pieces together. I sort of view us as the real estate investor as the orchestra director. That's right. This is sort of bringing these different pieces together. Like you said, when we started out a few moments ago, You had these people that could find deals but needed funding. And you had these people that have funding but aren't so good at finding deals and sort of bring them together. So as a result, you've got in that transaction example, you got win, 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 win. So Right, right. All right, so Wendy, let's get into your expertise. So you help people that have funds Mm -hmm. that that would like to get high rates of return safely and securely. You help people get funding for their deals. Let's start with the people that are looking for funding. You specialize single family houses in the Carolinas, but also you provide funding in a larger area for commercial projects, right? That's right. So so we are doing, we are lending pretty much throughout the Southeast, take Florida out of that mix, most of the other Southeastern states. And Yes, we the majority of what we do is single family, but we also do multi-tenanted properties, whether it's a residential multi-tenanted storage facilities, um, a doctor's building that would have several different doctors, live workspaces, ground up construction, all kinds of things. We want to think outside the box. 
because there is a box that most lenders, especially a conventional type lender, whether it's commercial or residential, they have they've got what we call institutional money. Right. And they have that box that they have to think inside of. We look at it as if, you know, let, what's the deal? People call me and ask me, you know, I'm trying to get a loan for such and such. You know, what are your rates? How do you call it? No, I've stopped them right there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Let's see what we can do. <laughs> because there, there's, they got, we have to see the whole puzzle to be able to put the pieces together and make it work for what it is that they're looking for and what's best for them and what it is they're trying to accomplish. Right, right. So now let's take a moment and talk about, so are you accepting and are you open now to folks that may have retirement funds or may have investment capital to to uh, explore with you the possibility of investing with what you have going on from a Absolutely. standpoint? Yes, absolutely. We do have a fund available for accredited investors. And what they would do is speak with my brother. He is the one that kind of oversees the bringing money in the house. I put it out on the street. Uh, <laughs> so, so we play those, play those two roles there. But we do have that fund for accredited investors. Our, our preferred, the rates that we're shooting for, for that person would be between 7 and 9%. We're not chasing double-digit figures. We are more interested in dealing with people who want to preserve the capital that they've earned up until this point. And, and we want to grow it, of course, more than they would in a, a CD or even the stock market at this point. So we, then it would be, of course, collateralized by the real estate because they're the bank. They'd be a member of the LLC. So, so that's the kind of person we're looking for, you know, five, five million net worth or higher, that kind of person in that fund, passive investor, you know, we want them to know as much as they want to know, but we really want them to just open up their bank account and see the money coming in. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, uh, well, I tell you what, I want to keep you on for another five or 10 minutes or so. Is it, but just for the sake of those that may need to jump off and run for people to connect with you, what's the best way for people to connect with you? Well, they can reach me at Wendy at carolinahardmoney.com or they're free to call my cell phone 704-400-9481. All right, perfect. And we'll put this for those that are watching on the YouTube channels. We'll put it right up here on the screen as well. And we'll give that out again here in the next five or 10 minutes when we wrap up. So let's jump around a little bit, Wendy. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm going to hit you from the side. Hang on. Uh, here it comes. <laughs> so what is some of the best advice that you would want that you would like to give brand new real estate investors that have never done a deal yet? They're, they're looking to do that first deal. They haven't done their first single family deal. They're exploring because here in my audience, I've got quite a varied audience. I've got an audience that's very, very seasoned in real estate investing. And I also have a part of my audience that they're still looking to do their first deal. Right. So let's, let's speak to those people for a moment, if you will. Well, I'll tell you exactly what I tell people that call me on the phone. I tell everyone that the first thing you need to do is get plugged in to your local real estate investor association or your local real estate meetup group. You cannot attend enough meetings to learn what it is that you need to learn. It's the cheapest education you're going to get. And, and you're going to get an opportunity to see all the different types of real estate out there because there's a million ways to skin this cat. You can wholesale, you can fix and flip, you can fix and hold, you can uh, just buy and hold, you can buy notes, you can be a lender, you can do anything you want in this business. Airbnb, I am, I, wait a minute, I need to say it correctly, short-term rental <laughs> is the correct way to say it. I am really, that's my hobby now, and I'm turning it into a business. I love short-term vacation rentals, and you don't even have to buy those. You can lease them. You can master lease it, arbitrage that, and then turn around and, and lease it out and make, you know, $1,000 a month profit on 10 houses. That doesn't stink. I mean, and the only thing you have invested is the furniture. Oh, and you don't even have to invest the furniture. Find somebody with a self-directed IRA that'll loan it to you for 8%. 
go out and buy the furniture and pay them off on the furniture. How much did you spend? Zero. Zero. To get into it. There's, it just goes on and on and on. The best thing you can do is get plugged into a network of people. The second thing you can do is don't get in a hurry. Good deals come along every day. I've been in this business for, what is that, 19 years now? And there were good deals back in 2001, and there'll be good deals tomorrow. It doesn't matter what the interest rate or what's happening in the world. There are good deals that come along every day. You wait for the one that fits what it is that you're trying to accomplish. That's key. I love it. I love it. And, you know, since you brought up the uh, getting involved in your local RIA or meetup group, Wendy, because of your spirit and your outlook on life and business and how you treat people, my guess is you're going to agree with me on this. And that is, you know, when we're, when we're coming from a space or a perspective of serving and mm-hmm. asking ourselves all the time, what can I do to serve this group of people? What I recommend to people, and you jump in, what I recommend to people is when you get involved in your local RIA, don't only go there to see what you can get out of it. Volunteer. Go to that local RIA or meet up right. and see what you can give to that group. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They need people who understand marketing, who can run a video, who can just sign people in, who can be greeters. You don't have to have any experience it's the best way to get involved. Absolutely the best way to get involved. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, because, you know, whether it's, and, you know, and, I, and, and I'm, I've been a networker. I love BNI. I love the Rotary Club, uh, Chamber of Commerce, all those groups that we have opportunities to be involved in. What I've discovered is the more ways that we can look to serve those groups just through the law of reciprocity, it's going to come back to us. I mean, that goes back to your Wednesdays that you're tithing. I mean, there's a spiritual law that cannot be broken, which is called you reap what you sow. That's right. (laughs) And, you know, and what I've also discovered is it seems as though the reaping is exponential when you sow with no strings attached. That's right. Well, that's the one place where he tells you to test him, right? That's right. That's right. Give and see what you get. Yeah. I was just thinking, do you know Tom Kroll by chance? I do. Yeah. Well, I got to know. Great guy. Oh, my word. I got to know him through our mastermind as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we also heard of the mastermind. We heard uh, Scott Myers talk uh, about a year and a half ago. I love the book that he just, you know, preaches about the go giver. The go-giver. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great book. It's a great book. There's another one, The Richest Man in Babylon. Yeah. That's another one that's really good. And then I like the richest, it's called Solomon, the richest man who ever lived. Okay. And to, to me, that's the best book I've ever read. And I'm probably maybe four times I've, I've reread it. Well, now I've got to write it down because I don't have that one. It's called Solomon, the Richest Man Who Ever Lived. Okay. Can you give us a teaser about the book without giving it away? Well, it's it's all about how if you read the book of Solomon, it is absolutely all about business. And you run your business the way the book of Solomon portrays you can't lose. And and it truly is about wisdom, just making really wise decisions. Excellent. I awesome. love it. I love it. And so, it refers to communication and relationships and it's, it's really, really just solid, really solid. Perfect. Perfect. Well, as we begin to wrap up, uh, Wendy, you know, you, you have mentored, you do mentor a lot of people. And so this is going to be sort of a broad net question, but <laughs> with all the people that have come to you, say in recent months, is there, is there a common question or two that you get from people that you hear them asking these days uh, that's pretty common, that whatever those questions are, you could share the kind of consulting and answers that you give these people these days? Well, I would love to say that there's a common question. And I don't think it's really verbalized, 
I think everybody kind of wants the same thing, but it's not all verbalized the same. It seems to me that everyone is looking for contentment in, in, in where, what their goal is. They want contentment. And the only wisdom I can throw out is you need to live today as if you're already there. Mm. We, we, you know, we make decisions because we want to be that down the road or we're, you know, I'm going to save up this money and I'm going to do this. When I get here, I'm going to do this. The journey is the best path to be on and you have to enjoy it because once you're there, what's left to do, right? So the journey has to be enjoyed because that's truly what the trip is all about. I, I just have to say that that most people are just, they they want guidance on that path. And that's what I try to give them. And I don't tell them where to go. I just give options. You know, here's what you need to ask yourself. I don't have the answers. They have the answers. They just have to dig deep and again, figure out what their why is. Why are you really here? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? What would you like to see? And and they really answer their own questions that way. Yeah. Well, you know, as you were answering that question, the thought just came to my mind for our audience members that are tuning in and for those that have already achieved a certain level of success. And if you are experiencing any kind of emptiness or non-fulfillment, or you're still looking for that level of contentment, as Wendy just says, that you're not experiencing, here's my advice given my journey over the past few weeks, and that is go serve somebody or some people that cannot directly do one thing for you. That's right. That's right. And I mean, you know, when you sit down and visit with somebody and they pour their soul and their heart out to you and they put their trust in you and you're, and you're sharing your, cause you know, we all walk around with filters. I say, take your filter off. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And be genuine and authentic with the other person that's looking for hope and looking for encouragement. You go serve those people and you will find some joy that you probably haven't felt in a while. That's exactly right. You know, it's so funny too. People tend, we all tend to kind of hide the things that we don't want everybody to see. And what I have really learned is that the more open I am, you know, I, I, what you see is what you get. The more open I am with that, the more open others are to me. And it's, it's your relationships grow so much quicker when you leave yourself open and sure you leave yourself open for attack that, but you know what? That's okay. That's okay. It's just an attack. You'll get over it and move on. <laughs> you can't please everybody, right? That's right. But, but if you're just open and honest and, and true to yourself, let people see what you're going through. Other people will step up and go, you know what? I've been through that too. And here's how I fixed it. Or here's how it happened to me. Or I know somebody that's been down that road. Let me connect you because I know they can help you. That's, you know, that's the best thing I can get out of that. I love it. Wendy, thank you so much for sharing with me on a more deeper level than we typically go here on the show. Thank you. Thank you. This was, this was great. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I love it. So one more time, Wendy. For those that want to connect with you and uh, continue the conversation, one more time, your email and your contact. Great. So if you would like to book a one hour with me, you send me an email, wendy at carolinahardmoney.com. It's down at the bottom of my return, down at my signature where it says knowledge is power. And remember, you don't have to be there because we can do it on the phone. You can also hit our website, carolinahardmoney.com. And my phone number is 704-400-9481. Wendy, on your, on your email address, it's W-E-N-D-Y, uh, Wendy at Carolina Lending. No, right? carolinahardmoney.com. Carolinahardmoney.com. Correct. It. Okay, that's excellent. Well, Wendy, thank you so much. What a breath of fresh air. 
Thank you. Goes back, <laughs> that goes both ways, Jay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. And listen, everybody, a special thank you for tuning in here to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. Thank you so much for being here on the show. Look forward to seeing you on a future show. And I'm Jay Connor. Here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Bye-bye.